do some 3D, you can still do basic 3D, like a realistic helicopter, loops and rolls. But apart from that hard 3D, anyway, you don't want to do it on a scale helicopter. Apache flying inverted. all the helicopter lovers they're gonna simply agree with me why we actually love the t6 radio still flying i will fly it until one bit all right so what happens if i hit the 6g mode off hope i hope you shang will not add it please do watch the section in my video where i will talk about so this is 6g mode oh man that tail winds a lot so that's the first thing i like about this flight controller another thing is man this helicopter really looks beautiful mashallah i think we should have a bigger version of it like in a 700 size be amazing. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I need to clean my face. Sweating, man. Sweating. Even the AC is on. Oh, oh, man. I gotta fly this helicopter in 45 degrees outside today. I'm sweating like a horse. All right, take two. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, assalamu alaikum, greetings, Alishan Mo here, welcome to more RC helicopter video reviews, and of course, yes, this is the detailed video review of this all new Yuxiang F11, the Boeing AX64 Apache attack helicopter. You have watched a quick flight test of this helicopter in my yard, and I can tell you, as soon as I put this helicopter in the air, I realized why I'm gonna love it and also why you are gonna love this helicopter. So in this video, I'm gonna give you complete information, as much information as possible to my knowledge about this helicopter. So stay with me. I'll show you the unboxing. I will give you a very closer look and you're gonna appreciate its detailed, scaled looks. And of course, after that, I will give you a more detailed and of course, longer endurance flight video and flight demonstration and we'll also test the 3d on this helicopter so stay with me on this video watch it all the way and do remember to subscribe and click on that little bell icon turn on all the notifications enjoyed the quick unboxing i have got a single battery version from rtr hobby this is an 1800 milliamp 11.1 volt 19.98 watt hour battery and i'm hoping that this will give me a lot of flight times because i gotta drive very far to test it in the mountains and you know the all the heat that i'm gonna go through today <laughs> and of course the battery charger doesn't charge the battery that quick all right let's take a closer look at the helicopter you are simply gonna love all the scale details they have put on this helicopter so starting from the tail side okay as you can see all the details down to those uh rivets and greeble on this helicopter they have put all the accessories props and everything they have installed on this helicopter for all the scaled realistic details they have spared nothing they did a very very good job we have missile pods and hellfire missiles i believe four of those there is uh i don't know if that's a 50 cal that's a 
big gun right there under uh, the helicopter I will show you where you will install it on the front you have these cameras and targeting systems radars but they don't move okay they are not articulated they will not move so don't try to move them coming to the left of the helicopter okay both sides you have the shark teeth shark eyes for additional uh, realistic details and decals okay and we have missile pods on the right as well led lights on both of the wings just like on the real helicopter you will have and we're coming back to the tail with more details there's a pipe going all the way just like a real helicopter and then they have some more props here i don't know if they are the anti-missile systems those flares that you use to you know distract the heat seeking missile okay and then we have vertical and horizontal fins on the tail you have a tail dragger with, which does not turn and it doesn't have any uh, you know shock absorber so don't try to push it uh, more okay on the bottom of the helicopter just to show you this landing gear it is a spring loaded landing gear so it will take some hard landing shocks but I wouldn't land very very hard this is basically a scaled helicopter so try not to land very hard these parts if broken replacing them could be real trouble but there's an aluminum piece right here a rubber tire okay and shock absorbing landing gear on the bottom there is you can see a brushless direct drive motor yes it's running both direct drive brushless motors there's an opening right here for some future uh poorly programmed things they want to add maybe i hope i hope you Xiang will not add it please do watch the section in my video where i will talk about why i prefer non-gps helicopters so this is your battery and the gun actually mounts on the battery so if you have two battery version you have only one gun you will have to remove this gun and add on to another battery i wish yu xiang didn't do the screws on this like two screws on this gun to mount it i wish yu xiang didn't do this two screws mounting of the gun on the battery i wish they did the same way they did here that you just slide this backward or forward and install them easily that would have been very very easy for us to install these guns now if you want to have more than one battery you need to have more than one guns to install on each of the batteries the main rotor head on this helicopter is a four blade authentic realistic main rotor head with a radar on top of it just like the real helicopter has there's an led light on top right here and then we have one light at the right and one at the left and of course on the tail side you also have one led light light here so that was the main rotor now here is the tail rotor which actually is a four blade ta tail rotor on a brushless direct drive motor and it whines a lot there's a lot of whining sound as you have watched in my first test flight video i am thinking what if i 3d printed a toroidal propeller for this one and see if it will reduce that whining sound or not so that is a project i will give myself or if we use slightly larger propeller for the tail two blade will it reduce the sound or not we're gonna do some experimentation on that now let's come to the uh, helicopter power combo as i said it's running dual brushless motors okay you can see one right from here on the bottom and the tail motor is visible right now i don't have information about the kv of those motors using four tiny screws you can remove this transparent canopy from your helicopter be very mindful that these are really tiny screws do not lose them but anyway yusha has provided you plenty of spare screws in a bag now coming to the flight controller i'm not sure if it is the same flight controller that is right here in the uh60 but what i like about this flight controller number one very easy bind button right here and a built-in SFHSS receiver so you can actually bind your Futaba or your favorite Radio Master TX16S or Radio Master Boxer Edge TX radios with four in one multi protocol module. You can bind this helicopter. I have already posted the video how to set up these 3D helicopters on your Edge TX radios. So you can easily watch that video, follow that video, and set this helicopter up to fly with the radio of your choice, like Boxer or Radio Master TX16S. So that's the first thing I like about this flight controller. Now the second thing that I like about the flight controller is right here. These three pots, dials that you can use to 
uh, it's just the gains of aileron, elevator, and rudder, just like we used to do in old school gyro systems. So no more uh, those uh, stupid apps to install that actually steals your private information. No more connection of Bluetooth. No more Bluetooth connections. No more connections to computer. Just good old school pots right here to dial the gains of your aileron, elevator, and rather gyros. Another thing that you want to note and you would love is that there is an S bus port and DXMX port. This means if you want to set up this helicopter with a totally different unsupported uh, um, radio controller that does not have a SFH as a system, you can easily add an S bus receiver right here. Let's say you have an S bus compatible ELRS uh, system receiver. So you can actually connect it here and configure your ELRS radio controllers. To fly this helicopter. Also, if you are an a Spectrum user, you can connect a Spectrum satellite receiver right here and can uh, and configure this helicopter with your Spectrum ra radio controllers and enjoy flying this helicopter. So, old school flight controller, I simply like it, man. And the details on this helicopter are simply nice. I mean, look at those details on the turbines. I wish they put, you know, red LED system right here or some smoke system in the future. That would have been nice, man. It would look really nice. Anyway, the red LEDs would look very, very nice for the afterburner kind of feel on this helicopter. Now, talking about the T6 radio, I'm sure all the people watching this video and all the helicopter lovers, they're going to simply agree with me why we actually love the t6 radio and still prefer to have this radio one it is a very simple easy to use easy to program radio it's already pre-programmed for the helicopter system you can easily tweak throttle and pitch curves in this radio very very quickly and set the helicopter to behave as per your own taste of flying so that's number one easy to use easy to program number two sfs is a system and that is one reason we simply love this radio. So Yuxiang, do not change this radio. Keep this radio and release more helicopters with T6 radio. I'm sure all my viewers and all the helicopter lovers are gonna agree with my suggestion. So for the charger, Yuxiang has given you this charger, all right? This is where you will insert your battery. So this is dedicated for that proprietary battery inside. And then we have a wall adapter, all right? And finally, we have this charger provided by the Yuxiang right here. 2 to 4S Li Poly Li Ion Balance Charger and Voltage Detector. So you can use it to charge the battery and also get the voltage of the battery. You can test the voltage of various batteries as well using this charger. So pretty useful, does a very good job, but it's a kind of little slow but it's kind of slow to charge that beefy battery right here. Takes quite a while to charge and gets pretty heat up while charging this battery. So when you are charging the batteries, look at my face, stay with the battery. I charge the battery on the table right here where the air conditioner is blowing cool wind right here on the table. So it keeps the charger, so it keeps this charger cool and also battery cool during the charging process during the charging process battery keeps nice and normal but this charger and this wall outlet they do get a lot heat up so once again look at my face do stay in the room with the battery when you are charging the batteries for this helicopter if you look at the battery you will see there's an on off button right here okay so you can basically press and hold and led lights will light up that means battery is on and it's supplying power to your helicopter okay or you can press and hold the button and make sure it's powered off before you actually put it for charging also notice there is a five volt output here right here so little uh, connector you can use it to power some of the fpv systems should you want to perform fpv on this helicopter personally i don't like to do fpv on these helicopters now installing the battery is easier okay just put it in push both locks and make sure these locks click open and lock the battery otherwise 
might be possible the battery will fall out during the flight and it will crash this beautiful helicopter. So do make sure that these locks actually sit and fit right there and click to their lock position. So here we are with the uh, Yuxiang F11 Apache AH64 in high dual rate modes, 6G and uh, you know, auto level mode. So here we go. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Oh, I'm trying to do this and this. <laughs> It's a manual helicopter, man. Come on, GPS helicopters really made me do that. So, just increase the throttle. And here it goes. Now, I have a lot of wind coming from the front side. That's a kind of wind that is coming downward, you know, coming from behind the mountain and then it comes downward. But it's big area for me to enjoy flying this beautiful helicopter. Man, that blade is spinning really so fast. So this is 6G mode. Oh man, that tail winds a lot. But look at that nice speed. Uh oh, you can't see it. I can't see it either. It actually blends in this background. All right, so what happens if I hit the 6G mode off. Yeah. So this is like higher head speed. But you will pull a lot of lot of speed. So it's like a sports flight mode. If I keep it right here. So there's a little bit of slope. Gear down and 3D mode. Yes, now we are manual. And I have much more agility. A feel of a real helicopter, man. Look at that. If it was slightly bigger, it will look like this helicopter is in real habitat, like in a... <laughs> so... There you go. Apache flying inverted. Okay, so this is like... 3D mode. Loop the loop. And roll the roll. So you can pull loops and rolls and a little bit of 3D on it. But actually, I would say much more 3D on it. My honest feeling is doing 3D on UH-60 Black Hawk was much more hardcore. And that helicopter was really much more hardcore 3D able. Not was, still is, and I brought it with me actually. But this okay. helicopter, but this helicopter like, you know, not that way, it's kind of my feeling, it's not that way. It does 3D, so you can actually do basic 3D. Basic, uh, you know, 
kind of realistic moves. But apart from that, mm, the tail rotor is actually whining a lot and I feel it goes out of power comparably to US 60 quicker. So, a scale helicopter like this, I believe you should just fly it scale only. Okay? I mean, if you want to do some 3D, you can still do basic 3D, like a realistic helicopter, loops and rolls. But apart from that, hard 3D, anyway, you don't want to do it on a scale helicopter. So let me bring it closer and see how much battery I have left. Still flying, I will fly it until one bit. Give it more head speed. Yes, to be honest, that whining rotor also feels like it's vibrating when it winds more. So we gotta experiment with, uh, you know, slightly bigger rotors on the tail. Or maybe, maybe I have to do a very tough, means from carbon fiber filament maybe, a very tough uh, tail rotor, probably parodial, so we will not have this much noise. Man, this helicopter really looks beautiful, mashallah. I think we should have a bigger version of it, like in a 700 size, man, that will be amazing. So people, this is Apache AH-64 from Yuxiang, Yuxiang F-11, really a nice flyer when it comes to scale flight, we can have a lot of lot of fun and do basic aerobatics and some 3D as well of course. Good flight times but because it's really hot here so I'm gonna land, I'm not gonna torture the motor too much. Right, and now for a little talk before my conclusion about this helicopter. Now, why do I prefer and why would you prefer these old school, only two flight modes RC helicopters? One, most of these GPS systems, they take away most of the flight controls from you, leaving you only to steer the helicopter. There isn't much enjoyment on that. And then some of the systems are really poorly programmed. And then finally, there are worries of GPS system glitches where people are having flyaway, unwanted behavior and helicopters are going and flying towards the beautiful trees and hugging the tree branches and crashing. So there's nothing to worry about in these helicopter because they don't have any of those poorly programmed GPS systems. Now these two flight modes simply cover both of the worlds. If you are a beginner, 6G flight mode, make these, both of these, I mean these two helicopters, we are talking about this A64, the 6G flight mode simply makes this helicopter very, very beginner friendly. It is very easy to fly. And then as your skills grow, you can switch on 3D and do not turn off 6G mode. Then it just turns into a sports flying mode where you will get full RPM on main rotor head and you will be able to enjoy a sports flight mode but no aerobatics because it will still be in auto level mode restricting your banking angle according to 6G auto level modes. And when your skills are really nice and you're ready for those aerobatics, you can switch off the 6G mode and take this helicopter for an aerobatic ride using the full manual, mm, I simply love it, using the full manual 3D mode and you can pull your sweet favorite aerobatics, either scale aerobatics on these helicopters that these real helicopters can do like loops, rolls and some of those figure eight vertical way or if you have skills feel free to tick tock and pyroflips these helicopters and pull more 3D aerobatics. I'm sure they will handle it just fine according to your skills. So this is the reason I love these helicopters because they give you both of the worlds. Beginners, 6G mode, they would love to fly it. They will have no issues flying this helicopter and they will learn to fly the helicopters the real way where you have to control the throttle. No, 
no more those dreaded altitude holes that actually train you that actually make you completely dependent on the GPS systems so no more such things old school you will learn to control the throttle and hold the altitude all by yourself you will enjoy the auto level flight mode and after that once your skills improve you will enjoy the full 3d capabilities of these helicopters so this is the reason I love this helicopter and I believe Yu Xiang you did a very nice decision this is the very right decision keeping this helicopter number one the old school 6g 3d mode and number two as I have always mentioned people a lot of people have their favorite TX 16 as radio master in their hand four-in-one system that offers Futaba SFH as a system a lot of people are still running old school Futaba radio control systems that offer SFHS protocol having to have this SFHSS open for all those people you have done a very very right thing you have made the right decision now people can actually buy this PMP and bind this radio and bind this helicopter to their own radio controllers and enjoy flying it with the comfort of their own radios the radios that we are really really used to like radio master tx16s and futaba i would love to fly this helicopter with both of these radios so this is a very very good thing you did yushan and we really appreciate it thank you very much for this one keeping this helicopter on old school sfhs systems You know what to do. Hit that like button. It's right there. I know you can do it. Oh, while you're at it, also hit the subscribe button. Right there. Come on. Don't be shy. Just hit it. Thank you very much for all your support towards my work that I post regular and fresh content on my channel just for you. Hit that like button. Right there.